good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, precious people of God. Depending on where you're watching me for, um, it's another beautiful day and it's Bible story time. We bless God for all he has been doing. And I pray that as we dive into the word, that God will help you see that which he has designed for you to see. Please come right in. We're going to deal with something real good and quick. Now today we'll be talking about the simplicity of the gospel. The simplicity of the gospel. You know, beloved, sometimes because of the advancement in technology and knowledge and reading and studies, they, they tend to be this fear or this drawback in terms of bringing the gospel in its simplicity. What I mean, sometimes we, we may want to quote it, we may want to make it advance in order that our viewers can be able to accept it. And the pressure that we put upon ourselves sometimes to be able to bring these things can be overwhelming. So today, by God's grace, we'll be looking at the simplicity of the gospel. Do you know it's okay? It's so okay that you have to speak the word in fear. Sometimes we may not be so bold and fluent and that of an orator to be able to bring the word of God in such a way that we think is profound. Sometimes we may have to bring the word in fear, in timidity. Yes. Can we go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. And I will read with the KJV translation. He said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, this was Paul speaking to the Corinthians church. He was saying to them, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or, we, or, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith, listen, should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yes. Can I read this in, in NLT translation, in a simple translation? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan, for I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything everything means my ability to speak my knowledge my qualification my proficiency i will forget everything except jesus christ the one who was crucified i came to you in weakness timid and trembling and my message and my preaching were very plain rather than using clever and persuasive speeches i relied only on the power of the holy spirit i did this verse 5 so you would trust not in human wisdom but in the power of God. Friends, don't get me wrong. There are times we may have to elucidate some things in order to be able to uh, explain better to 
people but I am talking about the simplicity of the gospel in itself to save the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 Paul was saying again for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to first the Jews and then the Gentiles meaning the power of God to save all who believes sometimes because of the advancement and the advancement in knowledge and qualification we may want to bring the word in cleverness lofty words impressive words but apostle paul was saying here yeah, an example that we can follow he didn't come with that boldness which we felt he always did he didn't come with lofty words even though he could make sentences make sense in the hearings of others he didn't come even though he was very educated he said i came to you with timidity weakness sometimes brethren you don't have to be brave you don't have to be bold you don't have to speak the world without fear yes because the enemy takes advantage of everything he said i came in the demonstration of the spirit and of power that's what is important and why did i do so so that your faith will not rest on human wisdom but on the power of god you may ask me what is this human wisdom that he is talking about you know let's just pause right here he said the reason why he did this why his preaching was very plain rather than using clever and persuasive speeches was because he relied only on the power of the holy spirit yes i believe he did his research he did his bible study which is very important we can't take that out we must be student of the word and spend time in praying right but here he's saying i have determined to rely on the power of the holy ghost because when we do he gives utterance you may be talking to a thousand and one people with a thousand and one needs and your words may not be able to attend to all those needs but trust the holy ghost who knows what the people need to be able to give you utterance he relied only on the power of the holy spirit so that the fate of the people will rely on the power of god and not in the wisdom of man friends this is like a reprover this year is something that I had to think about deeply because in my quest to preach the gospel, in my preparations, in my speaking, I must choose, I must make up my mind that the people's faith must rely in the power of God and not in human wisdom, not in my oratory abilities or capacity. My ability to check consistently with the Spirit of God inside of me as I prepare my messages, as I preach spontaneously or by preparation is very key. This is what you need. Because sometimes we may allow fear of they may laugh at me. I don't have the grammatical power where I can't put sentences together. I don't know what to say. 
Just open your mouth and he will feel as long as you have a working relationship with the Father. And I'm not just talking about organized gathering. You may be you may be led out there to start up a conversation that will reveal Jesus to your friends, to the people around your community, to those who God wants to reveal himself to, that you don't know what to say, may not be an excuse. All you need is to rely on the power of the Holy Ghost to help you in preparation and in preaching itself. One may say or ask, did Paul always speak this way, plain and non-persuasive speeches? Or was it just contextual? No. Just to point out here, because there are many who would always want to balance it, and that's what we want to do. He did speak with words of wisdom, even among matured believers. He did. He did. If you read further, from the, that same first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 he said we do however speak a message of wisdom but let me use kjv so that you would understand or nlt better see yet when i am among mature believers first corinthians 2 6 he says i do speak words of wisdom but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are seen soon forgotten. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God. His plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. Verse 8 says, but the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. What am I trying to say here? He said, don't think I speak like this always. Even among mature believers, I do speak words of wisdom. Remember, this words of wisdom is different from human wisdom. Human wisdom comes from human intellect the natural realm, the things they have learned in the natural realm, which is not all bad. But what I'm saying here, that there is a difference between human wisdom and the wisdom he's speaking here. This wisdom he explained is the mystery of God. His plan revealed, which was previously hidden, now revealed to God's people. Verse 10, from that 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10, it says, But it was to us that God revealed the things by His Spirit. For His Spirit shouted out everything and shows us God's deep secret. Verse 11 says, No one. I will use KJV. He says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the word, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Verse 13, my emphasis, which things also will speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I use NLT, New Living Translation again for 13. It says, when we tell you these things, we do, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. He doesn't. And he said, himself that it's not from human wisdom I say what I say. Instead we speak words given to us by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Even the wisdom we speak comes by the Spirit. Using the Spirit words to explain spiritual truths. We use the Spirit words to explain spiritual truth it's the Holy Ghost that teaches us 
does wisdom with so the Holy Ghost inspires and you know all he inspires is to reveal Christ to the people so what I'm trying to say here is that yes it's not all the time he speaks with timidity and weakness but the kind of wisdom he speaks of is the mystery of Christ revealed to men so what am I saying beloved we may even be afraid or timid preaching the gospel to others, but we must not give in to the temptation and pressure of our days to stand out just in words or true wisdom and charisma, so that so that only these qualities will be seen. But we must ensure that we rely on the Holy Ghost because the gospel of Christ is potent and powerful enough to save, deliver and heal. I hope I've helped you today and hope the Holy Ghost has ministered to, to you in very helpful ways. Till I come your way next time, God bless you.